Hey there, Mr. Sutton here with the Precal Honors 4-5 Extra Practice Number 2 Solutions on Logarithmic Equations. For this problem, to solve this equation, let's start by isolating the logarithmic term. So let's subtract 6 from both sides. That'll give us 3 on the other side. And then to get rid of log base 5, I have to raise the base of 5 to both sides of the equation. So 5 to the log base 5 is going to cancel, leaving me with just 2x. And then I'll have 5 to the third power on the right side. So this is really 125 over here. So we've got 2x equaling 125. Dividing both sides by 2, we have 125 over 2. And just doing a quick check, if I plug that back in, I'm not taking the log of a negative or 0, so we're good on that answer. To get started on this problem, we're going to combine the logs on the left side. When you're solving these in general, you only want at most one log on each side of the equation. So uh, if we combine these, we're subtracting the logs. That means we're dividing the things inside the logs. So we really just have to write log base 5 of fraction, negative 3x over 8. All that equals 2. And now to get rid of log base 5, I'm going to raise 5 to both sides. That cancels out my log on the left, leaving me with just negative 3x over 8. On the right side, I've got 5 to the power of 2. And now let's just uh, solve for x here. This is really 25 over on the right side. Multiply by 8, we've got 200 over there. And then dividing by negative 3, x is going to be negative 200 thirds. Now let's just make sure that doesn't give us 0 or undefined and plug it back in. If I plug a negative into this log expression here, it becomes a positive after I multiply it by negative 3. Um, so that's OK. And then this 8's just a constant, so that's also fine. So this answer, uh, answer is going to end up working for us. To make our lives a little bit easier on this problem, I'm going to start by dividing both sides by this negative 9. That gives me negative 1 over on the right side. And now to get rid of this log, I have to raise the base to both sides of the equation. The base here is an invisible 10. If you don't see a base here, it's assumed that we have base 10. So raising 10 to both sides, that leaves me with just negative 4v on the left side and 10 to the negative 1 on the right side. Well, this is really 1 over 10. If I divide both sides by negative 4, that's going to be negative 1 over 40. And if I just quickly uh, plug that back in here to make sure I don't get 0 or undefined or, or negative numbers, uh, negative 4 times negative 1 over 40 is going to give me a positive. That's fine to be inside a log. So this answer is going to work for us. To solve this equation, I'm going to start by getting a single log on the left side. So I can combine these by adding the logs together by multiplying the things inside the logs. So I'm just going to write this as log base 4 of, and now big parentheses, 9x squared plus 63. All that equals 3. To actually get rid of this log, I can now raise 4 to both sides of the equation. So that's going to cancel out log base 4, leaving me with just 9x squared plus 63 on the left side. And we will have 4 to the third power on the right side. Well, 4 to the third is really 64. Subtracting 63 from that, I've got just 1 over there. And then if I divide by 9, I've got x squared equals 1 ninth. At this point, I can square root both sides of the equation to get plus or minus 1 third. And are those answers both going to work? Because that's two different answers. If I plug both of those back in here, squaring them has the same effect because it gets rid of the sign. Um, and in both cases, I end up with a positive number inside this log. So both of these answers are good. For this equation, before we can do anything else, we want to make sure there's at most one log expression on each side of the equation. For this left side here, I've got two logs. To combine those by adding them, I'm going to multiply the things inside using my rules of logarithms. So this is really log base 5 of 8x plus 56. All of that equals 2. And then to get rid of log base 5, I'm going to raise 5 to both sides. So that's 8x plus 56 equals 5 squared that I can rewrite all of that as. So let's see, that's 25 over there. Minus 56 is going to give us negative 31. And then divide by 8, we have negative 31 eighths for the x value. If I plug that back in, will I get any negatives or zeros in my logs? Well, this number is a little bit... Uh, less negative than negative 4. So if I add that to 7, I'm not getting a negative out of that. Um, so we're good to go then. On this problem, before I can go any further, I need to combine the logs on the left side into just a single log. 
before I can undo any logarithms. Uh, so to merge these together by subtracting, I have to divide the things inside of them. So this is really log base 5 of x plus 4 over x equals 1. Now to get rid of 5, I'm going to raise uh, 5 to both sides here to get rid of log base 5, I should say. So that's going to leave me with x plus 4 over x on the left side and 5 to the 1 on the right side. Now if I just solve for x, multiply both sides by x, I've got x plus 4 equals 5x. And then if we subtract x, that's going to be 4x. Divide by 4, we've got x equals 1. Now just quickly checking, if I plug 1 into the original equation, I'm getting positives inside both logs. So this is a legitimate answer, and we can stop. On this problem, I'm going to start by merging the logs on the left into a single log because really I want at most one log on each side of the equation before I try to undo any logarithms. So uh, these can be merged together by dividing the things inside because I'm subtracting the logs. So I've got log base 4 of x squared plus 2 all over 2 equals log base 4 of 3. Now that I have a single log on each side, I can raise the base 4 to each side of the equation that cancels those logs and leaves me with just x squared plus 2 over 2 equals 3. All right, well, uh, algebra at this point, we're going to multiply both sides by 2 to get 6 on the other side. Subtract 2, so we have x squared equals 4. And then if I square root both sides of the equation, uh, remember you have to have a plus or minus when you square root equations. So this is plus or minus 2. Now, are those both good solutions? If I plug them back in here, in either case, I'm going to end up with 4 when I square my answer. Uh, plus 2 is going to give me a positive number inside this log. All the other logs have positive numbers in them. We're not taking the log of 0 or a negative, so all of our answers are good. And we're done with the problem. On this problem, to get rid of these logs on each side, I have to raise the base 16 to both sides. I only have a single log on each side, so I can do that right away. Uh, so that'll just cancel my logs, leaving me with a squared minus 15 equals a minus 3. This is a quadratic equation. I'm going to zero this thing out so that I can try factoring it. So I've got a squared minus a, and then negative 15 plus 3 is going to give me negative 12. All of that equals 0. So things that multiply to negative 12 and add up to negative 1, how about positive 3 and negative 4? So from this factorization, I get a equals negative 3 and positive 4. Now, do those answers both work? If I plug negative 3 in, I can see in both cases I'm going to end up getting negatives that I'm taking the log of, which is no good. So since negative 3 makes the original undefined, because you can't log a negative number, uh, that means we have to cross that out. It's an extraneous root. It's not part of our answer. Let's check out 4. 4 minus 3 is fine. 4 squared minus 15 is also a positive number. So we can keep 4, but negative 3 is gone.